Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. Uh, this week we have some not super fun housekeeping to take care of. Uh, I built a table and our injection molded parts are on the way. Um, so first of all, I wanna make something super clear because it's been causing a lot of confusion and we're getting a lot of questions about it, which is that MakerMade and Maslow CNC are completely separate companies. We have no relationship with each other. Uh, and so you're probably wondering why are they using our name and our logo on their products? And we're working on trying to get that fixed. Um, but for that to really make sense, for why it's happening, for that to make sense, uh, we sort of need to go into some, some backstory. Uh, so about five years ago, when I decided to stop selling the original Maslow CNC machine, uh, I posted all the files and all, you know, all the software, all the designs, all the links to where to get, to, get all the parts uh, for free on our website. I gave it away to anyone. And a bunch of people reached out and wanted to start selling them. And so I helped whoever was interested with that process of getting started selling them. Uh, and I helped them get set up. And then since then, for the last five years, I've just been working on building Maslow 4. Uh, and I actually have been working on it that whole time. Uh, I mean, I had to you know, have a job to pay the bills. But like nights and weekends, I've been working on it steadily the whole time. It, it, it seems obvious in hindsight when you like look at how it works. You're like, that's the, clearly how it should work. Uh, but I went down a whole bunch of you know, different rabbit holes to figure out this is the way it should work. Uh, there was a whole string-based version. Anyway, I'm, I'm doing my thing. I'm working on, on Maslow CNC. These two guys started at MakerMade, right? And they're doing their own thing. It's a totally separate company. Um, and I have no insight to it. I have not talked to them. Uh, when they set it up, uh, I gave them permission to refer to it in the product description as a Maslow variant. Um, and I gave them permission to use a little badge they made, it, made which said Maslow approved because they didn't want people to think they were stealing my design. I gave the design away for free, put it on the website, anyone can download it. Uh, they do not have the rights to the name Maslow CNC. So these guys are running Maker Made, they're doing their own thing. Uh, it seemed like a little bit of a mess from the outside. Um, they made some questionable decisions, but I wasn't, you know, had no input on that. Um, for example, they claimed that it was twice as fast, um, but that's just a software setting. You can set the max speed to anything. The thing that limits the speed on the old design is that the weight of the bricks can only pull it so fast down and have it cut well. So you can change the, the maximum speed to be anything you want. Uh, it just won't work very well. Um, it certainly, I don't think, justified bumping the price up to $1,000, changing that setting. Um, they also wrote their own control software, you know, where you log in, you, you, know, you go on the computer and you know, move the machine around and load files. And for some reason, they decided that you had to get a, a username and login from them to use the software. Um, and then the, the, the login server went down and no one could log in anymore. Um, I don't have any inside information, but I think maybe they just didn't pay the guy they hired to write the software and he took the login server down. Um, anyway. Not my problem, right? I'm doing my thing, not my problem. Uh, another thing that these guys did is they sort of at some point decided that um, actually packing and shipping the kits was too much work, because it is a lot of work to you know, put everything in the box and send it out. So they hired this other company in China to do that packing and shipping. So basically, these guys were doing whatever they were doing, and when you put in an order, it was actually getting shipped by this guy. Um, and I don't know what happened, but somehow there was a big fight behind, between these three guys. These guys ended up owing this guy a ton of money. And as some sort of a settlement, this guy ended up owning the rights to Maker Made. So, so Maker Made, which was started by these two guys, is now owned by this other company that does packing and shipping um, from China. And so that's, this, this guy now takes over Maker Made, right? And he currently owns Maker Made. And I believe as part of that process, he thinks that he got the rights to the name Maslow CNC as well. Um, and I don't know how that happened. Um, I imagine, you know, sort of giving everyone the benefit of the doubt here, like this company like normally does stuff for like trade shows, like they make like trade show gift bags and, you know, keychains and stuff. They don't really know a lot about open source things or the maker movement. Um, and I think it makes sense to them that he, he felt like he was dealing with the people who created this machine. And that when he took over ownership of MakerMade, he also got Maslow. Um, 
And I can see how these guys, it's a stressful situation. They owe this guy a bunch of money. He's taking over the business. I can see how it would sort of slip through the cracks to like make it really clear to him that he's not getting Maslow CNC. So this guy then licenses the name Maslow CNC to someone else who I don't even know who that is. So if you buy a machine on Amazon right now, it's coming from this other person. I don't even know who that is. Um, so that's, that's the situation. And it's a bummer. Uh, it's obviously not, not fun. It's not fun for anyone. I mean, giving sort of every, everyone the benefit of the doubt, these guys genuinely, I spoke to them on the phone when they were first starting up, they genuinely really wanted to make a cool maker company. Um, and I think they had really pure intentions. And like running a hardware company is really hard. Um, and they lost a bunch of money doing it. And I'm sure that was not a fun experience. This guy didn't want to end up owning any of this to begin with. And he's now in the situation where he owns MakerMade, which doesn't really have any assets that are that valuable. Um, like I don't really see what he ended up getting in that deal. Um, and he never wanted to be running any of this in the first place. And then this guy genuinely thinks he licensed the name Maslow CNC from someone else. So like, I can kind of see where everyone's coming from, but the problem is people are buying these things and they think they're getting something from me um, or from us. And then I'm getting you know, angry emails from, from people um, and it's hurting the Maslow CNC brand. Um, so we're trying to get it straightened out. The, the upshot is the only place you can buy a Maslow CNC is from MaslowCNC.com. Um, anything else out there is not a Maslow CNC. Uh, Maslow CNC is a trademark. It's registered. We're working on getting that enforced. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just unfortunate that... So we're sort of giving everyone the benefit of the doubt. I can see how we got in this situation. But at this point, everyone is aware. I don't know if this guy's aware. I don't even know who that is, how to contact them. But at this point, MakerMade is aware that they're infringing on our thing and that it's bad for the community. And basically what they have told me is that their attorney will be in touch with me and I'm waiting for their attorney to get in touch. Um, maybe their attorney is like working on a really nice way to say that they're sorry and that they realize now that it was all a big misunderstanding. Um, sort of skeptical about that. <laughs> um, I think that it kind of feels like they're trying to steal Maslow brand. Um, but anyway, you cannot buy a Maslow CNC from anyone else right now. You can only buy one from MaslowCNC.com. And we are currently sold out because we are 100% focused on delivering to our Kickstarter backers. So you just can't buy one right now. If you want to buy one, join the email list. We will send you a link to MaslowCNC.com where you can buy one when they're for sale again. All right, on to some more fun stuff. I made a table. So I just moved. Um, and this is actually a table that I made previously, or I made a, a version of previously. Um, so I just moved, and I have a very small dining space. And so I have this sort of awkward situation where I don't have enough space to have two chairs facing each other. I only have enough space for two chairs that are side by side, which is weird, because you don't want to sit side by side with someone while you're eating dinner. And this company, OpenDesk, makes this really nice table that works well in this situation. Uh, OpenDesk used to have a bunch of free plans for um, CNC cut furniture, uh, but they stopped sharing their plans because people kept stealing their designs and not giving them credit. Um, so they don't have plans anymore, but I designed my own. Last time I, d I did it using their plans, and it was a little bit flimsy, so this time I tripled up the legs, so the legs are three layers thick. And I also, they used a bracing system where they had some other CNC cut parts, but I decided to try to mix in some 3D printed parts. Uh, so here we are just cutting the parts out. Um, I decided to be a little more aggressive this time. This is cutting the, it's cutting 20 millimeters thick plywood in uh, four passes. So those are five millimeter deep passes. Uh, and I believe it's 1800 millimeters a minute cut speed. Um, and everything went really smoothly. I feel like things are kind of getting to the point where I'm actually just able to make stuff without having to think about too much about the machine not working. I mean, I'm, there's still there's still many, especially like usability things. There's many like things I want to change for making it easier to use. But uh, generally, things are working really well. That crashing bug we mentioned a long time ago hasn't happened in a long, long time. Uh, I believe Roman fixed it, so kudos to him. Uh, but we're just going to continue keeping an eye on it. This file actually didn't take that long to run. Um, this whole thing cut out in about an hour and 15 minutes, I think. 
Um, but then each of the 3D printed braces took 11 hours to 3D print. So uh, it's actually, yeah, you'll, you'll notice later on that I don't even have enough braces. I'm still waiting on the last two to finish printing. One is printing right now. But yeah, smooth, smooth sailing on the cutting. Oh, one other thing is I was using a, um, a straight cut router bit, so it doesn't have any spiral to the flutes, and so it didn't really suck the sawdust out very well. Uh, it didn't make a mess on top of the surface, but down in the cut, there was still sawdust. So this is after I picked everything up and vacuumed out the sawdust from the cut. So this is actually filmed from the bottom. Um, so you can see where the tabs are that held, held all the pieces in place while they were being cut. And this is just close up. Uh, the cut quality was great. Even, even cutting a bit more aggressive like that, um, got nice clean, nice clean edges. And then after this, I sanded everything down. And then this is the brackets. So I 3D printed these brackets. Uh, this was my idea to show how heavy they are. It, you know, it's got some heft to it. Uh, these are almost solid. I 3D printed these from Prusament PETG carbon fiber because uh, I had a roll of it laying around because I thought maybe it would be strong enough to print Maslow parts and then it wasn't. So I was sort of just trying to use it up. Um, and they are super sturdy. So here's, here's one of the legs. Here's how it bolts to the bottom of the table with these two, two brackets. And you can't tell, but I use my other hand to wiggle it here and it doesn't really move. So you can't see anything on camera, but that's how you know it's solid is it didn't move. And then here's the final table. Like I said, I'm still waiting for the last two brackets to print. So it's not quite 100% done. But even with those brackets missing, it's already more solid than the one I made last time, which um, used a different leg mounting system. And also the last time, the, the legs were only two layers of wood thick, and now they're three layers of wood thick. So I like my design changes. Finally, our injection molded parts are on the way. Um, we've got pictures, and we have a tracking number. They should be here Friday, so we can start testing them We'll have them tested for next week's update. Um, they look great. There's, these aren't the final color, and there's some tweaks they're going to make. Like you can see on the bottom of the sled, uh, this is called a knit line, where it's like the flow of the plastic goes around and knits back together. Or in this case, it's actually just where the plastic is shooting out of the um, injection sites. Um, so there's, there's, this is the first pass. They're going to work on tweaking the temperature and the cycle time and things like that to improve them. Uh, and there'll be a little bit more of a gray color. Uh, this won't be the final color. Um, but yeah, we're super excited to get those uh, tested. We can make sure that everything's good and we can get those into production. Um, and hopefully we can get everything in our container and have it on the road. And then uh, one last thing is we're in our new space. Um, I don't know why I didn't open with that. Uh, it's super messy right now, but we'll do a tour at some point in the future. And we're definitely gonna do an open house for anyone who wants to come by and visit and kick the tires and see what we're up to. Uh, all right, have a great week, everyone. Uh, I'll see you next Wednesday.